Hi, in this session I'm going to cover how to use the rate function. Now the rate function in Excel basically returns back the interest rate based on an annuity. And an annuity is basically a fixed sum that is paid to somebody over a time period, basically either monthly or yearly. So we'll cover the rate function in two perspectives, one as an investment and the other one as a loan. So first with the investment, let's say for example that you decided to put a thousand dollars into some kind of savings vehicle uh, there's no monthly payments you're not going to be introducing additional payments into your investment and let's say you want to do it for 10 years and you want to have ten thousand dollars by the end of 10 years so let's see how we can use the rate function to determine what kind of interest rate you would need to get to ten thousand dollars in 10 years based on a one thousand dollar investment so with the rate function, basically you can just type equal rate, open parentheses, and the number of periods that is going to be here, 10 years. I'm going to press the comma and the payment. So there's not going to be any payment, so I can either select that cell or just type a comma. But I'm just going to go ahead and select that cell. It's zero anyways and the present value it's going to be ten thousand dollars so ten thousand dollars is coming out of my pocket going into whatever investment vehicle I have now the FV is the future value which is ten thousand dollars now the type basically is investment is it uh, it's going to be zero or one is it going to be in the beginning of the period or at the end of the period let me go ahead and bring up the function wizard or the function arguments window to show you the description so if I click and type here it will tell you one let's see one is the beginning of the period and zero is the end of the period so I got that the other way around but that basically is an optional value so I don't need that so if I click OK you'll see that in order to get ten thousand dollars with a investment a thousand dollars for ten years the vehicle that I have chosen would have to give 25, 26%, basically 25.9%, 26% rate of return. We'll say that I want, instead of $10,000, I want $100,000 by the end of 10 years. Now you see that what happens here, it's, it's going to error out. And the reason why it does is, is Excel, the rate function, it does some internal calculations and it goes through about 20 iterations of the calculation before it times out and it's probably gone gone through 20 iterations of trying to guess the or trying to calculate the rate so in order for it not to give you that error you can type in a guess so by default Excel uses a guess of 10 percent but let's say that we decide to say give it a little higher we're going to ignore that type and we're gonna say we'll give it a guess of maybe 20 percent and once we enter in this figure it's going to go ahead and calculate the rate so if you ever see that number error you should be aware that what Excel is doing is it ran through 20 iterations of trying to figure out the rate uh, based on 10 percent and it went past the 20 and gives a number error so the way to get around that is to give it a guess higher than 10 percent now let's say that we have a loan scenario instead now with the loan scenario, what we're saying here is we are given, in this case, we're given $5,000. Say that the bank decided to loan us $5,000, and they're telling us that we're going to, well, better but yet, yeah, this may be a car dealership. So let's say in this scenario, we have a loan from a car dealership. We're buying a car, and they decided to give us a loan of $5,000 to buy the car, and they're telling us every month you're going to pay $250. See that minus sign? That's coming out of our wallet and the number of periods we're going to do for five years and the future value of course you want that loan to go to zero after five years so you have to figure out what is the interest rate that they're charging me this can be also done with the rate function so I'll go ahead and type equal rate and the net the number of periods that's going to be five but since it's a monthly it's going to be a monthly payment I have to multiply it by 12 and the payment is going to be $250 per month, so I'll select that. The future value, I'm just going to go ahead and select that because it's zero. Oops, the present value, let me, let me get that. Present value is $500, so they'll give me $500. And the future value, I want that to be zero. So I'll go and press return, you'll get 4.68%. So that's going to be 4.68% monthly. 
Now, what will it look like per year? So in order to get it per year, I'm going to have to multiply that by 12. So you can see on a yearly basis, that dealership is going to charge me 56%. That is a really good profit for the dealer. So when you see these kind of scenarios where you are given a loan and, and they're giving you just a monthly payment, do some calculations. And if you want to use the rate function in Excel, that will help you determine what the rate you're getting, both uh, in a loan scenario and you can also do it in an investment scenario for some kind of what-if analysis. If you have a thousand dollars you want to invest in uh, some kind of investment vehicle for X amount of years and you want to have a certain amount, you can use the rate function to help you determine that. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos from me, click here to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and leave a comment below. I'd like to hear from you and hope to see the feedback. Also, do you think others might benefit from this video? If so, click the share text below. YouTube will automatically provide a shortened link to this video and give you options to share on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, and other social networking sites. Again, thanks for watching.